as chairman this January and not run for another leadership position. My reason for doing that is this. Stepping down from the Republican leadership will liberate me to spend more time trying to work for results on issues that I care the most about. Well, we're joined now by the man himself, Senator Lamar Alexander from Tennessee. So, Senator, it Morning, sounds Senator. like, did you feel handcuffed being in leadership? Oh, handcuffs too strong a word. Any anytime you take a seat at the leadership table, you give up some of your independence. So I'm giving that up and I'm getting my independence back. But, you know, let me ask one more on that because this has been an ongoing debate. I can tell you this inside the White House sometimes. It's been an ongoing debate uh, in previous White Houses, which is mm -hmm. when you reach across the aisle, uh, do you, you go to the leadership or do you go around the leadership? Oddly, aren't you making the case that, de that, the, that the, a Democratic White House or even a Republican White House is better to go around leadership since it is harder to, as you just say, to, to, to uh, have your independence? No, no, really, really, I don't. In fact, I think the Obama White House made an extraordinary error during the first year and a half of the president's term by the president never having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Republican leader Mitch McConnell. I remember the days when President Johnson right. used to invite himself to Republican leader Everett Dirksen's Senate office to have a drink after work, call him every day to check on his health. That's how they got the Civil Rights Bill passed. So you start with the leadership. But uh, those of us who aren't in the leadership uh, can make it easier for the leaders and the president to succeed. You know, there's been some uh, chatter among conservatives over the last 24 hours that say, you know, you really uh, decided not to run because there was some talk you were going to run for the number two post. Senator Kyle is not uh, running for re-election to the U.S. Senate, so therefore stepping down from that. And you just didn't have the votes. Well, I'm, none of us have the votes for that. That happens in, that happens in 15, uh, 15 months, and none of us knows how it will work out. In the Senate, most of those decisions are made based upon relationships. I've been elected three times to the Republican conference. I, uh, Trent Lott beat me by one for whip before. My decision was based solely upon this fact. We're very lucky to be here. All of us are political accidents, and I want to make sure looking forward that I made the best use of this time. And it, the best use of this, this time for me is to work to get results on the issues I care about. In the Senate, that means you've got to find some people from the other party to agree with you or you don't get 60 votes. You know, Senator Dick Durbin and some Republicans stood together and they were all happy that there were 36 of them, you know, pledged to work in a bipartisan manner. Yeah. Uh, I, pardon me for being cynical, 36 is not 51, 36 is not even 60. Yeah, 36 is a lot, though. Anytime you get that many senators working together on a single important issue, you've made a big step in the right direction. You get 10 or 15 senators on either side uh, who are working together, whether it's on Supreme Court matters, whether it's on energy, whether it's on preserving the right to work law, and especially to get a third of the Senate saying we want a big step to reduce the debt. That's big news in my book, and that's the kind of, in that are the seeds of success. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Senator Durbin brought up right before you, uh, he was upset about a letter that some Republican lawmakers have sent to the Fed, sent to Federal Reserve Chairman, and it was signed by Mitch McConnell, John Kyle, uh, Eric Kanner, John Boehner, saying, uh, essentially asking him not be careful about lowering interest rates. Is that appropriate? Do you think that's appropriate that politicians, you know, the Fed is supposed to be independent, sort of trying to have a little bit of distance from politics. Should political leaders be exerting some political pressure like that in, in the form of a letter? Chuck, I, I haven't seen the letter, don't know about it, rather not comment on it until I read it. So, uh, so the, it, it was sent by the leadership, so nobody passed the letter by you, they didn't ask you to sign? I haven't seen the letter, no. Let me ask you about, you, an, uh, go ahead. You, you said it was sent by McConnell and Kyle, that didn't include me. Okay. Let me ask you about another uh, political issue here. Yesterday, Governor Rick Perry, who's running for president, you've run for president before. You know these <laughs> moments uh, in, in some form. It, forgetting the substance of the hit at the time, do you think it was appropriate for him to be with foreign nationals, criti uh, uh, criticizing the president while he's in the middle of negotiations on this uh, Israeli-Palestinian issue, uh, to hit him so hard publicly in blocks away? Should the politics have waited a few days? Uh, the answer to the question is yes, but let me uh, let me let Mitt Romney and, 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 and Perry duke that out. Let me, I think Perry, if he had to do that over again, probably wouldn't do it. On the other hand, on the debate the other night, I tuned in for a few minutes. I mm -hmm. saw him defend his immigration stand. 
uh, in front of an audience that didn't agree with him. I thought he looked very presidential doing that because I think people want a president who sticks to his guns on things he believes in. Let me ask you one more thing on Republican presidential politics. Are you one of these that believe there's still time for more folks to get in or this field satisfactory enough to you? Well, I think we've got some pretty good people. I like the three governors. I like, uh, I like Romney. I like Perry. I like Huntsman. I think they're all pretty substantial people, and, and they give us some good choices. Some others do as well. But in the world we live in today, others can come along. I mean, if Rudy Giuliani showed up fast, maybe he could. Uh, he, he's not a new name to the American people. Sure. Uh, Fifteen years ago, it took a long time to get known. Today, anyone who runs for president comes very fast. And you'll remember in 1995 and 6, Steve Forbes, yeah. who'd never held a public office before, got in late with his own money and very nearly uh, knocked Bob Dole out of contention. Well, you know, one of the things about that race that people forget, and you know this well because you've run a couple of times, is how, hard, how much things you have to do actually in October and November to get on ballots. Steve Forbes didn't get on every ballot at the time. No, no, that's right. I think the presidential race is going to be decided by whoever shows up in January looking most like a president. And that doesn't mean pandering to this view or that view. That means showing the capacity to deal with jobs, national security, and lead us out of some real problems into a brighter future. And that's, that's harder to do than it looks. I mean, going from being governor even of a big state to yeah. a presidential primary in January is like going from the eighth grade basketball to the NBA finals <laughs> overnight. You know, let me ask you that. Is sort of, you, you were sort of touching on this question where it does seem as if it is Mitt Romney and Rick Perry at the end, that there's this question of, What's more important to Republican primary voters, quote unquote, electability or going with somebody that matches their own views? Now, I've always heard this. Well, Republicans always try to find the most electable conservative. Democrats simply go for the most electable. What's your view? Do you want somebody more electable? Will you take somebody that you don't necessarily agree with if you think they can win versus somebody that matches your views a little bit better? Well, my view, and I think most Republicans want someone who's sufficiently conservative, but you know, in the end, we don't necessarily want a president who agrees with us on everything. In fact, we might want to make sure he didn't agree with us on some of our prejudices. I think we want somebody to lead the country, set an agenda, develop a strategy, try to persuade half of us he's right, and then we can react to that. So I think Republican primary voters in the end are looking for a president, not just for somebody who agrees with every single view they have. All right, Senator Lamar Alexander, you're definitely, you said you're running for re-election for sure in 2014. That's still the case, right? For, for the Senate. For the Senate. All right. <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. Senator Alexander, good to talk to you this morning. Thank you, Chuck. President Obama has a day of arm twisting ahead of him. Live pictures here of the General Assembly where the president will speak shortly. We're going to have live coverage.